in the cabinet of masks, deep in the warren of the Vatican Museums, is this red marble seat. Originally, it was one of two. The other was stolen by Napoleon and is now in the Louvre. To anyone who has seen a Roman latrine, it's obvious that the Vatican chair is nothing more or less than a very fancy toilet. It's quite possible, in fact, that this seat and its twin were made for an emperor's private use. When the two toilets were rediscovered in the Middle Ages, they were moved to the Lateran Palace, the center of papal power in the Middle Ages. And there, for reasons nobody quite knows, they were incorporated into the investiture ceremonies of new popes. When a pope formally took possession of the Lateran after his coronation, he entered the chapel of St. Sylvester, where he encountered the two Roman toilets, now known as the Sedes Porphyretici, or Porphyry Thrones, since the red marble from which they were made resembled porphyry, the stone of the Roman emperors. The Pope sat first in the seat on the chapel's right side and was given the staff of St. Peter and the Lateran keys. He then moved to the seat on the left, where he was girded with a gem-studded sash and received the homage of palace officials. Finally, still seated, he cast silver coins to the crowd. Why did medieval popes use two Roman toilets during their investiture ceremonies? The simplest explanation is that the toilets were misinterpreted as ancient thrones, and thus as symbols of continuity between papal authority and the majesty of the Roman emperors. Their strange shape, however, soon gave rise to an even stranger legend, which we'll consider after this brief word about our sponsor. This is a certificate, informing all and sundry, that I may hereafter style myself Lord Garrett Adrian Ryan. Lord Dr. Ryan is also acceptable. I am, in short, officially a big deal, and you can be too. Established titles sells certificates to small plots of land in Scotland, which enable recipients to call themselves Lord or Lady, in keeping with time-honored Scottish custom. The company sweetens the deal by planting a tree after every purchase, and supporting the preservation of Scottish woodlands. So, if you have friends or relatives with aristocratic aspirations, established titles makes a great gift, especially with Mother's Day right around the corner. To take advantage of the massive sale going on now, click on the link in the description and use the code TOLDINSTONE for an additional 10% off. Back to our distinguished toilets. By the Renaissance, the ritual of the seats in the Lateran Palace had come to be regarded as a strange anachronism. Leo X, elected in 1513, was the last pope to go through it. But by then, a legend had arisen that one of the seats was used to ensure that a newly elected pope was male. It was widely believed that, sometime in the early Middle Ages, a woman named Joan had disguised herself as a man and become pope. Her true identity was only discovered, the story went, when she gave birth in the middle of a papal procession. Pope Joan never existed, but for centuries many people thought she did, and connected the scandal of a female pope with the strange pierced seats in the Lateran. When the pope first sat in one of the porphyry chairs, it was rumored, a dutiful junior cleric would reach through the hole in the seat and confirm that the new guy had the right set of genitals for the job. Once this had been ascertained, it was proclaimed, he has the pontificals, or, a bit more explicitly, he has two testicles, and they hang well. Whereupon, we are told, there was much rejoicing. Nothing like this ever happened. But especially for those inclined to criticize the papacy, the legend was too juicy to ignore. Despite being repeatedly debunked, the idea that the Pope was groped still crops up online. The truth is strange enough. For centuries, two Roman toilets stood in places of honor in the Lateran Palace, revered as the seats of emperors and popes. They became icons of popular legend and tokens in the struggles between the papacy and its critics, before finally settling into dignified retirement at two of the world's greatest museums. 
few commodes can claim such distinguished careers. If you enjoyed this video, please consider supporting Told in Stone on Patreon. You might also enjoy my book, Naked Statues, Fat Gladiators, and War Elephants. Thanks for watching.